Welcome everyone and thank you for joining us. I'm Renee, the editor of Blue Line Magazine. We hope everyone is staying safe and well, as many of us are self-isolating or, or physical distancing right now, those of us that can. Uh, what better way to spend some time than doing a little bit of learning? So for the next hour, you'll be exploring how Cloudian's object storage solution fits the policing IT environment to govern and protect all data delivering a single source of truth for digital evidence. You'll walk through some interesting cases featuring video surveillance at correctional facilities, uh, law enforcement body cams, dash cams, etc. And you'll see how integration is possible to simplify complex IT requirements. Plus, this system protects against ransomware and internal threats, reducing cost with an on-premise cloud storage solution. And, you know, as we're seeing a number of COVID-19 fraud and phishing scams ramp up, this couldn't be more relevant. So if you have any questions during the webinar, type them into the questions box, which you will find on the panel on the right hand side of your screen. They will all be answered at the end. And don't worry if we don't have time to get to all of them, there will be contact information provided for a follow up. So. Without further ado, let me bring in our presenter, Henry Golas, Cloudian's Director of Technology for Canada. Henry is an expert in all things storage, and he's focused on your business outcome requirements as police agencies. I know you're in for a real treat with him. So Henry, take it away. Thank you very much, Renee. Good morning, everyone. My name is Henry Golis. I'm the Director of Technology for Cloudy in Canada, and today I'm going to be focusing our conversation around object storage for digital evidence data. From an agenda perspective, I'm going to briefly touch on and introduce Cloudy in Canada, and then I'm going to work through and move through the challenges associated with policing and digital evidence. I'm going to be specifically focusing around data storage for digital evidence management systems for DEMS. I'm going to introduce object storage for those of you that aren't familiar, and then I'm going to move three use cases and summarize three use cases, and then summarize the Cloudian value proposition. So, from a Cloudian Canada perspective, I'd like to introduce Terry Swarn, who is the director of sales for Cloudian, and again myself, Henry Golis, director of technology. Everything that I'm going to be talking about today is focused towards policing and law enforcement agencies. But the platform that I'm going to speak about has other use cases in traditional IT and modern application development. So from a technology perspective, you can find all of our information regarding solutions in the first link under resources. And at the end of the day, what we are offering and what we're here to talk about is a piece of software. So to those of you who would like to try and download our software, it's available at the link at the bottom. And I'm more than happy to help anyone trial or POC the software whenever they're ready. So if we take a look at our society today, we can see that we are an ever-increasing digital society. Every interaction and every transaction creates data and information. Now, what does this have to do with policing and modern policing challenges? Well, quite simply, the digital transformation that law enforcement agencies have undergone or still yet need to undergo changes the way evidence, specifically digital evidence, is managed. If we look at some industry feedback, it looks like there's about four primary challenges facing DEMS today. The first challenge here is the volume, velocity, and variety of data has increased significantly in the last five to 10 years. Today, any one case can have multiple sources of data, sources like digital forensics data, CCTV footage, social media streams, or even civilian captured data from their mobile devices. And we can all agree that each of these sources is ever increasing in size. The second challenge here is that legacy storage systems like SAN or NAS or TAPE are simply not able to keep up with modern challenges. These challenges all revolve around data backup, preservation and archiving of data, and disaster recovery. These points are significant, significant pain points for operators and agencies today. The third challenge to agencies is the ability to enable the secure sharing of data between law enforcement agencies, crown prosecutors, and other agencies like the media. And lastly, we're seeing agencies struggle with access to data via mobile or internet-based devices. Now, from a conversation perspective, I'm gonna focus around the first three challenges as the latter is typically handled by the DEM 
And the key messaging that I want to take away here is that the where part of the data, where data is stored, matters. So to the volume, velocity, and variety of data today. In 2016, IDC estimated there's about 16 zettabytes worth of data in the world. So that, that's 16 million petabytes. Their estimates are that by 2025, which is only five years from now, the amount of data is going to increase to 163 zettabytes. Again, what does this have to do with policing? Well, if you take a look at a report published by IHS Technologies, the global amount of CCTV data generated was about 560 petabytes per day in 2015. So that's simply five years ago. Based on their estimates, they're, they were looking at that the total CCTV output per day was going to hit 2.5 exabytes in 2019. So given today's date and a bit of data growth, we're looking, about, we're looking at about a zettabyte of CCTV data being generated every year. So this is a lot of data and it's being generated very quickly. This also doesn't cover the variety of data that agencies are challenged to manage. So think about the different formats of video and photo compression or codecs as used today. To name a few, we've got TIFFs, we have JPEGs, we have MP3s, MP4s, Atropska video files, MKV files, and the list goes on and on. Take a look at how much data is being generated by uh, online businesses or popular online sites. If you look at Facebook, they're generating, generating about four petabytes worth of data. Take a look at how data and our camera technology is evolving. If you're shooting in 4K video, so 4K RAW, you're, you're basically consuming about five odd gigabytes a second. So that's about 300 terabytes or gigabytes an hour, and that's about eight terabytes worth of data for one camera shooting in 4K for a day. Now, mind you, granted, yes, you wouldn't necessarily be storing raw 4K video, but the point here is that the volume, velocity, and variety of data today is ever increasing. So, to the second challenge of digital evidence storage. As I mentioned, traditional storage systems, be it SAN, NAS, or tape, were never really designed to scale to the sizes that we see today. NAS systems struggle with file systems over one petabyte in size. Traditional SAN systems create multiple data silos that become a burden to manage. And let's be honest, tape really is not an option when you need the data now. So the data that we have today, it still has the requirements for availability and protection. We have to make sure it is available for the systems, the users that rely on it for day-to-day -day operations. It needs to be protected in case of, let's say, an operator, a node, or a system failure, and at least one secondary copy of data needs to exist to mitigate a complete site failure. This is commonly referred to as disaster recovery and business continuity. So these types of digital evidence storage challenges have sparked many conversations around cloud and cloud-based storage. The vision that was once painted is that the cloud is a data panacea. All you have to do is move your systems to the cloud and let someone else manage it. While the reality is that the industry recommendations around this are recommending a hybrid approach to evidence management, an on-premise system with a cloud copy for disaster recovery. So let's bring this back to our relevant point. If we take a look at the LAPD. The LAPD has about 7,000 body cameras and about 1,400 in-car cameras. Every day, the LAPD produces 15,000 videos, 5,000 hours of footage, and about 5 terabytes, so 5,000 gigabytes of video. Doing a little simple math, that adds up to 1.8, almost 2 petabytes of data per year, and that number is growing. Now, if we take a look at the market of values for public service providers like Amazon, we can see a large costing difference for simply storing the data in AWS versus an on-premise solution such as Cloudium. Taking a look at the graph, graph that, which reflects, reflects a total cost of ownership, a TCO analysis, so I'm talking about egress charge, like egress for data charges, power, cooling, administrating, et cetera, et cetera. For the data that's stored in public cloud versus Cloudian, we can see that the Cloudian costing proposition is much, much more attractive and affordable versus public cloud use. You can see the details in the link at the bottom of the slide, or if you go to cloudian.com slash resources, it'll be data storage by the numbers. The last challenge that I'm going to touch on here is the secure sharing of evidence between case parties. Now, this is everyone from litigators, prosecutors, the media, and really anyone with any interest in the case. And ultimately, I'll be brief here. In order for data to be admissible, it needs to be immutable, auditable, and provide chain of custody. 
this data also has to be shareable in a secure fashion. So, you know, these legacy uh, sharing solutions such as, you know, the DVD, SneakerNet, or even more modern filing sh file sharing solution platforms such as Box or Dropbox are not necessarily the most secure options out there. Also, having a single source of truth for data breaks down the different data silos within agencies and allows for a single consolidated data platform. So to that, allow me to introduce object storage and allow me to introduce Cloudian. So let's start at the very beginning. When I speak about an object, a data object is simply a piece of data. So this is a blob. We can, it can be a text file, it can be a photo, it can be any, it can be any kind of associated document as you like. And this, this file is going to have system metadata. So it's going to have the details of who created the date, how large it is, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can have associated metadata associated with this. So we're talking about any kind of customized context information. So for, let's say, if this is a um, crime scene photo, you're simply going to have at least minimum three pieces of data. You're going to have the date, you're going to have the photo number, and you're going to have the case number. Now, an object storage platform doesn't deal with data on a file system or a block extent level like you would with a NAS or a SAN. It simply deals with data at the object level, meaning applications directly access objects without having to worry about any of the underlying technology. That's a function of the platform. So object storage is the next generation of platform for data storage that evolves beyond NAS and SAN. Object storage platforms exist today to address some of the scalability challenges of NAS and SAN. Object storage platforms such as Cloudian easily scale into the exabyte, exabyte in size. So to Cloudian, Cloudian is a software-defined object storage platform, meaning it will run on any hardware or in any cloud. Now, you may, be, you may have noticed that I'm using the word platform a lot here. It's on purpose because what you want to do from a technology perspective is offload features and functions to the platform versus using specialized software or functions for it, the old analogy of why pay for what's free. So features and functionality like native, native data protection. With Cloudian, you no longer have to back up your data, your damn your CCTV, when you can just simply replicate it to another site. You can also le leverage the tiering functionality to move data to a public cloud for that DR or that tertiary copy. Also, a platform like Cloudian offers self-healing functionality, meaning that I can guarantee you the bit that you move in there today is going to be the same bit that's going to be taken out three years, three months, 30 years from now. Another point from a platform perspective is object storage platforms are typically considered metadata rich. And what does that mean? Well, metadata allows for the context independence of data. And this basically all comes down to is that all the relevant information about a specific case file could be associated and added to each object. So anything you like, um, date, time, case ID, any relevant information, CIs that were associated, et cetera, et cetera. The point here is that if you move this object from one storage platform to another, the metadata stays with it. You are no longer bound to the system that created the data. You've created independent data or context-aware data. So why Cloudian and what's the value proposition here? Very simply, from a cost and a scalability perspective, Cloudian's marketed rate is half a penny per gig per month. This is significantly more cost-effective than any of the hyperclouds. And from a scalability perspective, Cloudian scales at a node-by-node -node basis. So <clears throat> each additional node into our system gives you additional performance and capacity. Also, by leveraging some of the native data protection available from the Cloudian platform, you don't have to back up data. You simply keep a secondary copy at another site, and you've effectively solved that challenge. Again, the old adage is, you know, it's all fun and games, still you have to back up and archive a petabyte worth of data. Now, Cloudian is also a metadata and search, uh, metadata rich platform allowing you to do search and index functionality. So on top of a dem having the ability to put in custom tags or any kind of search fields, you can leverage Cloudian natively to do that for you. From a data ingestion perspective, Cloudian keeps data in its native file format. Well, what does this mean? Well, I mean, when you move a copy or a photo to Cloudian or a Word document, we're not proprietarizing it. We're not putting in any kind of container access. You don't have to go through us in order to access it to get the data out. You can natively access the, the file in whatever format it was put it in. We, we basically, we don't mess with the data. Now, from an access perspective, the way you access Cloudian is through AWS S3 API. By large and by far, it's the most common platform, most common API kit to access an object storage platform. 
for those applications and systems that don't have that uh, functionality, we have a gateway for legacy SIFs and NFS uh, use cases. Some of the added bonuses here is that Cloudin addresses data immutability with worm and object lock functionality. What means is that what I mean by that is that I can protect a piece of data from any kind of alteration or modification, meaning that once you put the let's say you put the document in the plant form, that's it. It cannot be further modified, it can't be it cannot be changed. And I also can provide auditing and audit log to provide that to prove chain of custody, meaning that I can tell you who accessed this data as well as anyone tried to overwrite it. Clouding can also address the single source of truth challenge by being that single data platform versus multiple data silos. And lastly, Clouding has na native secure sharing functionality that allows for secure data transfers between parties. So enough about me and enough about us, and let me introduce Calcasieu Parish Sheriff's Office. Now, they are a Louisiana-based sheriff's department and they're running GTEC STEMs. From a sizing perspective, they've got about 400 plus body-worn cameras, about 200 odd some patrol and prisoner transport vehicles. The challenges and the requirements of what they're looking to do is that, first and foremost, they had challenges around costing of public cloud and performance and locality of data. Again, you're only as fast as your closest demarcation point to cloud. The requirements were that they needed to have an on-premise solution with AWS S3 cloud integration. They also needed a rich metadata to allow self-describing assets, and they needed integrated data protection, meaning they didn't want to have a backup software doing backups for them. So the solution that was presented was a two, six, uh, two clouding clusters worth of 600 terabytes worth of capacity with replication from primary site to secondary site and using the platform to tier data off to AWS for that tertiary copy. The net net of this was a 50% reduction on storage related CapEx spend for the parish, for, for the Sheriff's Department. If you're interested in more information, you can follow the link at the bottom of the slide. Now the second use case that I wanted to bring up is the city of Montebello bus lines. So the city of Montebello is about 18 kilometers west of downtown LA. They host about 8 million people, passengers annually on their fleet of about 72 odd some buses. So the primary objective for the city of Montebello bus lines is the security and safety of their passengers. And their challenges were really around having to investigate any kind of related incidences on one of their buses. And their challenge really came down to, it was a very manual effort. And what I mean by that is that if anything happened or when anything happened, the city of Montebello would have to recall the bus from the field because each bus stored data locally on, their, uh, on the systems for all the cameras on the bus. Then a transit officer would have to physically get the video off a bus by a USB key, watch it, find the incident, then burn the darn video onto a DVD or upload it by a very slow internet link. So they're saying that, you know, it takes me an hour to upload the video, it's gonna take an hour to download the video. As you can imagine, this is an incredibly manual process and while the bus is in, the service depot, it can't be, uh, it can't be servicing its citizens. So they had, this affected citizen service times because again, the bus can't be in two places at once. They also ran into challenges around um, sharing where multiple offices, including law enforcement, would ask for videos for various reasons, such as like video scraping footage. And because there was no centralized search or storage of these videos, it was literally up to a human to index this and be like, oh, you're looking for something like this? Okay, I've watched this video and here's the file name that you need to, fi to find it. And lastly, they ran into sharing challenges as part of this whole manual search thing. So anyone asked them, like law enforcement or prosecutor would ask them for video, they would get, you know, they'd have challenges around integrity of video, and they also had chain of custody concerns as, you know, the, the DVD sneaker net changed hands three or four times before it actually got to where it needed to go. Overall, this was a very, very reactive and frustrating system for the city to deal with. Now, the solution that was implemented was leveraged, leveraged the software provided by Streamit. And basically, Streamit works as a VMS system, a video management system. Streamit provides the real-time availability, access, and transfer from its edge devices, which are the buses, and it also provides the searchability of a centralized storage repository. That centralized storage repository being Cloudium because we're able to, we're, we're easily accessible and we're scalable. 
So the net result here is that the city of Montebello's incident rate response resolution time decreased significantly. As I mentioned, if anyone's interested in more details, you can find the uh, full details on our webpage. If you look at the bottom of the slide, you'll see the link for it there. Now, the last use case that I want to present today is uh, the ICC. So the uh, International Criminal, Criminal Court was founded to investigate and try individuals charged with the gravest of crimes. So we're talking about genocide, war crimes, crimes against humanity, really bad apple behavior. So the ICC's challenge is that they deployed a HD video recording system to record all the court proceedings, and they had a requirement for all, this, all these videos to be stored and retained for a minimum of 50 years for archiving purposes. Beyond these videos, the court was also looking at implementing a full archiving solution for the videos and whatever other data generated by the court that required long-term retention. Now, from due to the highly sensitive content of data, the requirements were that they needed an on-premise storage solution. The solution had to be cost-effective and scalable. And lastly, and this was a real challenge for a lot of customers, or a lot of competitors, was that the solution had to be non-binding to specific vendors. So it, nothing, no proprietary file formats. So the solution that we proposed here was a six-node Lenovo-powered Cloudium cluster on-premise. So to move over to and kind of move move through this, so there are numerous players in the digital evidence management space. You've got familiar players such as NICE, GTAC, and many others. Now, from an architecture perspective, the key here is to leverage a platform such as Cloudian to resolve some of the underlying challenges associated with data management. The big three typically come down to cost, scalability, and availability of data, which also includes data protection. Connectivity-wise, many DEMs use the AWS S3 API for connecting to object-based storage. And this makes interaction integration with Cloudian easy. It's typically a drop-down menu and a policy configuration, and you're done. Now, for older SIFs and NFS-based mounts, we're able to leverage or we're able to provide a caching server to allow those legacy systems to leverage Cloudian while, you know, I chuckle and I say this, you know, while, while the developers work on their S3 integration. So the key benefits of such a solution is that the underlying data storage platform provides a cost-effective and easily scalable data store that includes native data protection. This allows the platform to take care of your items such as traditional backup, as well as the platform provides for that data immutability and the chain of custody. Again, the key message here is that we are leveraging the platform, not specialized systems to do things for us. Now, as a bonus, the same Cloudian platform can be leveraged for multiple use cases beyond a DEMS. So for your video management systems, computer-aided dispatch, record management systems, and your traditional IT system use cases are all candidates. So backup repository, target, um, file offload, those type of things. So to summarize our conversation, today data matters more than ever, and we are charged with making it available for the people and the systems that need it day in, day out. When looking at the modern law enforcement agencies and the challenges around the data Vs, so volume, velocity, and variety, the amount of data is only ever going to increase. This is going to put more strains on existing legacy infrastructure that it really never was designed to handle. And again, I'll be direct here. Legacy storage options don't cut it anymore. Conversations that revolve around moving entire data sets to cloud are interesting, but the challenge of moving entire data sets into cloud is it's a costing nightmare. It's not a functional long-term solution with the explosive data rates we are seeing. The good news here is that the challenges around digital evidence storage regarding cost, scalability, and availability are solvable problems with the correct platform. A hybrid approach that builds around Cloudian provides that cost-effective, scalable solution that natively addresses the availability and data protection challenges. The same platform also provides the underpinnings for secure data sharing between agencies with data immutability and audit log features to maintain chain of custody. Clouding can also provide a single source of truth in consolidating multiple data silos into a single platform. And lastly, Cloudian is future-proof to help DEMS and law enforcement agencies address more modern accessibility and portability challenges. So with that, I'll pause here to see if there's any questions. That was uh, wonderful, Henry. Thanks so much for that insight and the information on leveraging this, this ecosystem for the policing environment. And, and we do have some questions that have come in. 
So I will field them over to you right now. The first one is, what's the minimum footprint for Cloudian? Sure. So from a minimum perspective, we're talking, since we are software, our minimum footprint buy-in is 10 terabytes worth of capacity. From an appliance perspective, because we do offer appliance models, it's uh, around 100 terabytes. Wonderful. Okay. And on to our second question. If I use Cloudian to move data into uh, public cloud, how do I access my data? Sure, there's a couple of options to do this. So you can access your data through Cloudian um, as that single entry point um, using native S3 calls or using the program that you used it to access it in the, uh, to move the data or to access the data in the first place. You can also access the data natively through any of the cloud providers. So if you tier that data or move that data into Azure or AWS, you can use native S3 calls from the applications or storage blob calls to access the data. As I mentioned, we don't containerize the data, so you're able to um, leverage any of the existing platforms to simply access it natively. Awesome, okay, yep, there's options, okay. And a third question, can I use Cloudian for other applications outside of a DEM, a digital evidence management system? Sure, um, so yes, Cloudian is um, a multi tenant tenable platform, meaning that you can have multiple use cases all residing on one physical infrastructure. So you may have a DEMS use case on one side of the agency. You may have your traditional IT using it as a target for storage backup on the other side. And they're all able to share the same platform with my like, quality of service feature functionality and charge, among, charge back functionality built into the platform. Wonderful. Uh, one more question here, Henry. How would an agency integrate Cloudian into their environment? Uh, do we need to rip and replace anything? Uh, so uh, to the rip and replace question, uh, no. The way we generally see uh, new customers, new agencies come on board is they will augment their existing systems with a Cloudian footprint and start moving more and more data over to us as time grows on. So the concept of it's, you know, leave it on the vine, so to speak. So as that technology, as the existing NAS or SAN technology goes end of maintenance, you're gradually moving more and more data over to Cloudian, making your cutover a lot more easier um, versus, you know, a full data migration and a rip and place kind of conversation. Okay, very helpful. Are there any other use cases for Cloudian in our environment, and uh, do we need to buy a separate Cloudian silo for each purpose? That's your final question there, Henry. Okay. Um, so from a use case perspective, anything, um, anything as far that speaks S3, and we have a lot of support for legacy SIFs and NFS, uh, applications to access our platform. So data protection is an easy use case. We have use cases for big data. It is, it's really a separate conversation almost onto itself. Um, and from a uh, creating a separate instance of a Cloudian cluster in your environment, that's not required. You can simply have all that data live on a single platform with the uh, chargeback and quality of service functionality that's built into the platform, you can basically divvy it up that, you know, everybody gets a share of resources and they also can get charged back if your agency so chooses to do so, to have a representative number of like, oh, you used 100 terabytes today, so a traditional IT, this costs you X, your DEM system uses Y, your CTV uses Z, that type of thing. So it's all available on a singular platform without having to go through multiple silos of Cloudian, so to speak. Wonderful, okay, very thorough. Thank you, Henry. Uh, that is it for the questions that have uh, come in from our attendees. So thank you so much for, for sharing the information. I, I love how you ended with the you know, data. It, it's not going away, it's more important than ever. So uh, you, you gave us a wonderful uh, overview of, of some of the options uh, that we should be looking into to increase efficiencies and uh, just help our readers uh, do their jobs better. So we appreciate your time. Thank you, Henry. Thank you very much, Renee. Thanks, everyone. So, everyone, we will be sending out a survey via email to all attendees after this for some feedback. Please fill it out so we can serve you better. And if you learned anything that excites you, interests you further, please pass it on. Tell your colleagues. Tell your friends. We're out here to help you all do your jobs better.
and increase efficiencies, as I just said. So thanks again for everyone for tuning in. We hope you're staying safe out there. We wish you peace and health in these uh, difficult times. Keep reading Blue Line. Check our website, blueline.ca, for more news, trends, products, podcast episodes, in-depth features. We've got it all. <laughs> Bye for now, and thank you.